On Wednesday, the House of Lords voted again against Rwanda, introducing nine, seven, seven votes uh, that uh, defeated the government, seven amendments, including one that uh, tries to ensure the legislation complies with domestic and international law. And the other changes include an exemption for the victims of modern slavery, which would please Mrs. May, and for those who've worked overseas for British and armed forces. Very important. And the defeats will, will mean, I, of course, the government can simply take it back into the House of Commons and ignore all of those amendments, as it did on Tuesday. But, uh, and, and the bill will be returning to the House of Commons on April the 15th for further debate and votes on the amendments. And no doubt, no doubt, the government will ignore the House of Lords and push it through. But it will then, I mean, it, it will still end up being a mess. And at the moment, the first possible flight that can now take off is going to be after the May local elections and the the more intransigent Rishi Sunak and the Parliamentary Conservative Party in the Commons behaves, the more it's likely to lose votes in the local elections and the more embarrassing that defeat is going to be. And the problem is that the, the, the people standing in the wings to take over from Rishi Sunak are even more aggressive, even more hardline, even more, quote, right-wing, than the present government. There doesn't seem to be a moderate group that's prepared to stick its head above the parapet and say, look, this is wrong. And yet, it is the moderates who will be voting against Rishi Sunak in the local elections and then in the general election. It will be the moderates who bring him down not the extremists. The extremists, uh, some of them will go off to reform. Of course they will. They will say, say, oh, that's the new home of conservatism. It's not conservatism. It's aggression. Conservatism is about trying not to change tradition. It's about trying to conserve what we have and trying to adapt that for the present moment. And... The present moment seems to me that we look towards what is going to do our country good and what is doing our country harm. What is doing our country good at the moment actually, among other things, is immigration. And uh, this trope about controlling our borders is nonsensical because our borders buttress Europe. Europe controls our borders. We're more in hoik to Europe now, after Brexit, than we were before. And it's harder to get out of the UK and get into another country than it ever was. The red tape is astonishing. What have we, what have we voted Brexit for? Simply to compound the amount of red tape that we that we need to wrap ourselves in. Well, we've made that Brexit decision, so the best thing we can do is make the most of it. Trade deals with other countries and trying to forge the best relationship with Europe that we can possibly have, short of being in Europe. And the migrant crisis is one of our own making, is entirely because of the failure of Lord Frost to negotiate an alternative to Dublin Three, And uh, the small boats issue is not the problem. The problem is smuggling. There are very clear solutions, <laughs> and providing a deterrent to people who are desperate is not... <laughs> is not efficacious. It's a waste of time. It's aggressive politics. It means nothing. And we are in, uh, we are again in hoik to 
another regime, and this time I think a regime which is questionable in Rwanda. Are these the bedfellows that we want to that we that we want to pander to when we've broken away from the constraints of Europe only <laughs> to fall into the manacles of a rogue state or a potentially rogue state like Rwanda. Rwanda could be great and we should be investing in Rwanda and helping Rwanda to be, to become better, but this is not the way forward. Yes, a deal like the deal which uh, Maloney is proposing for Albania might well be a deal that we could do with Rwanda, but not the deal on the table. And actually, we'd be better off sending people to Albania. But then, of course, Suella Brabham queered our pitch with that one by screaming invader and bashing on the dispatch box. A lot of bashing and not very much sense. But that seems to be the Conservatives certainly from uh, Liz Truss onwards, but I, I, I think the rot cut in with Theresa May, um, and, uh, and, and it's been a downward spiral ever since. And this is in the interest, it's in the interests of the Labour Party as well as the Conservative Party to sort this out, because we can't, we can't, have, we can't have a country which continues to be um, ruled by madness like this. Uh, whether it's in government or in opposition, the Conservative Party needs to get its act together.